two, one. Okay, I'm going to talk about show pig vaccines. Um, picture on the left here, that is a board that was sold in 2013. It's the highest selling board to date. It's cost $380,000. He so, on the left? Yeah. $380,000? That's the most expensive pig I've ever seen. Yeah. Okay. So, to kind of lead into that, this is why vaccinating our show pigs is so important. So they don't get sick and we do have the potential to have a $380,000. And then the one on the right there, that's just a sow. Um, now hopefully the audience can tell a sow <laughs> versus not the boar. Okay. Um, and I guess what I want to point out with these two pictures is there's a huge difference between show pigs and like commercially raised pigs. Um, it should be pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Now when you, these show pigs, obviously the boar is intact. So then, is he going to be used for a lot of breeding or collection of semen and that's why he's so valuable? Yeah, that'll just, that's AI only. Um, okay, okay. I think his first year for one dose was, I think, 750 bucks. Whoa, now that's, okay. And by the way, what, what breed was that? That was just a crossbred. Oh, that was a crossbred yeah. board. That's for a crossbred board. Okay. <laughs> okay, why do we use vaccines? As I'm sure all of you know, we're building immunoglobulins uh, to uh, quickly recognize and attack foreign objects the second time it would show up. Um, the two types of vaccines that are most common that we use are live but it's attenuated, which Otherwise, it means modified live or it's just a weakened version and then killed vaccines. And you get a better response if it's live, by the yeah. way. But there's a danger because if it's not modified right, it induces the disease in the animal. And it's amazing how sometimes at the laboratory they goof and it's not modified the right way and then you inject the vaccine into the animal and the animal comes down with the disease. See, we're good partners, aren't we? <laughs> and with that, especially like PERS, um, as detrimental effects as that has, if you give a live PERS vaccine, that could be very, very, very bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, so start off with sows. Um, some of the basic sow vaccines, uh, these are the two that are like recommended you give. Um, Ferrosure Ferro -Sure Gold. Uh, which is for parvo, lepto, and erysipelas. And then that picture right there is erysipelas. Um, basically just <coughs> diamonds on their skin. They're raised just a little bit. Now I've that's never... the pig that has erysipelas. Right, so that that's has the lesions. Okay. okay, that's what you're trying to prevent. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And with both of those, parvo and lepto, um, those increase your number of stillborns um, increase the number of mummified pigs, decrease your, decrease your uh, conception rates, and so on and so forth. Uh, with that vaccine there, you give two doses to yields before breeding, and then uh, two weeks apart. So you give, so you give one, one week, and then you give another three weeks. And then you give a booster to sows when you wean them. The next one is recumbent PCVM. Uh, which is circovirus. Circovirus had a big outbreak, I'm going to say it was probably seven or eight years ago, uh, don't quote me on that. Um, there was a lot of uh, dead pigs because of it. Um, and with that also it's got a mycoplasma pneumonia booster. And also with mycoplasma there's the pneumonia side of it and you can also get the swelling of the joints and all that side of it. Um, they kind of work hand in hand. but. And then with PERS, mycoplasma is very common for a pig with PERS to get. Okay. Just because their immune system is so weak and the <coughs> mycoplasma takes over. And you get a single dose booster two weeks before you breed them. And whether it's a, is this whether it's a sow or a gilt or? Doesn't matter doesn't because matter. they they will be vaccinated with circo and myco as a baby pig. Okay, so okay, oh, I, see. I got you, I got you. And these are just some of the optional ones. Uh, you don't have to give these. And by the way, all these are just what my veterinarian mm -hmm. recommends mm -hmm. and what we use. Um, you got Pro System CE, which is E. coli and Clostridium protection. Um, two doses to yields, five and two weeks before farrowing. 
so they'll get these while they are pregnant. Um, and any time you give a vaccine while they're pregnant, you increase the, the risk of abortions. So it's not um, just a little gray area. Okay, right, right. Um, and you give booster to sows two weeks before deferring. So you only give one dose of sows and two to kids. And then there's your PERS vaccine. Um, when that is a modified live vaccine, because, like you were saying before, you get more results with a modified plan. Mm -hmm. um, two doses of gills prior to breeding, four weeks apart. So you give dose one on week one and dose two on week four. Um, and then when you do give PERS, you, you have a mass vaccination. So you do your entire herd. That yeah. way, yeah. if one would get it, and the rest of them are already vaccinated for it. So it's, you're going to be covered. Okay, so how is that administered? Is that an inject injection table? That's everybody? an injectable. Okay. Yeah. So all this is probably injectable. Yes, everything's injectable. And then another thing with the PERS modified live, that you mix it, it comes in two bottles. Um, and when you mix it, you have to use the entire bottle. Okay. Otherwise, it mm -hmm. will not be good. Is one of the bottles lyophilized then? Is it like powder? And then you have a powder bottle and a liquid bottle probably? That would be my guess. I, I actually okay. don't vaccinate for PERS, so okay. I can't. That was how we did it where I worked. It was like yeah. powder and you mix yeah. it with like a... A, a gill yeah, right. sterile water. Because, yeah, a lot of times something will come lyophilized, and then you have the diluent or the saline or whatever the right. uh, liquid is, and then you mix them, and then you got to vaccinate or throw, the, throw it away. Yeah. yeah. Okay, gotcha. I got one other thing. Maybe the audience doesn't know when gilts are bred. You know, a gilt is a female pig that's never had a litter. When, what age are you breeding? Um, For example. Usually. I try to have my gilts fair when they're a year old, okay, at least fair. a year old. Okay. So it'd be 114 days before that. Right. So right. right. So that's like uh, seven months. Yeah, something right. like that. And that's pretty good to get a gilt to have puberty by that time. Right. Usually it's five to seven months. I think is yeah. the puberty of gilts. Yeah. Now, do you use boar exposure to induce puberty? Uh, not so much to induce it, but while breeding, we use a teaser boar. Yeah. Just run right. it around. Because you're doing AI then? Right. Yeah. yeah. Basically, I'm going to say 90% of show pigs is AI. Okay. Okay. Because, yeah, this is, this is show pig, right? Right. This is yeah, show yeah, pig. Yeah, um, And young pigs, so these could vary from, you know, two hours old to, you know, 280 pounds. So just kind of a broad horizon. Mm -hmm. They're not sows, they're not boars, they're just feeders, I guess. Right, right. Um, Here's your circumvent PCV again, um, and there's your mycoplasma and circovirus. So when you give that booster to your sows, they already have it they as a baby. Mm -hmm. um, this is given uh, two ml dose when you typically when you wean them. Um, I actually like to wait until they're probably five or six weeks old because we gave a group this. That was probably three or four years ago. And all of them had a reaction to it, and they all like laid on their side and started paddling. I thought they were all wow. are going to die. That's scary. They all made it. So, okay. um, yeah. And it seems the older they are, the less those kind of effects you get. Mm -hmm. And then another thing with that one is, um, when you're doing little pigs, you want to let it warm up to room temperature first. And then, rhinus shield, which is for ear syphilis and atrophic rhinitis. This here is a picture of Ryan <laughs> Um You can see his nose is turned. We don't see it a whole lot anymore. Um, we've kind of gotten away from it, luckily. But from the stories I've heard, I've never seen it. You go out one morning and everything's fine. You go out the next night and everybody's got their nose turned crooked. Wow, that's dramatic. And they will die from it. Yeah. Um, you give two doses of that six and eight weeks of age. And then flu sure, this is one that just kind of perked up here the last probably three or four years when everybody had the H1N1 swine flu outbreak. Uh, this came on the market and this covers uh, H1N1 and H2N3. So just both different forms of the flu. Uh, then two doses needed, eight and 10 weeks of age. And they say, to wait until they're eight weeks old because they already have some immunity from Mom. the sow. And you give this vaccine and 
it basically doesn't do anything. Okay, yeah, because that's a great point. That's one of the biggest reasons for vaccination failure in young animals, the presence of maternal antibodies. Because as soon as you inject the antigen, the antibodies are there to inactivate it, and it doesn't get exposed to the immune system like it should. Yes. I'm glad you brought up that point. Uh, continuation. So obviously, you can see there's a lot of things we got to give these. Things. I just see somebody with a needle going around all day doing this. <laughs> yeah. And you can't mix these things, or it's I mean, yeah. you're given four different shots. Right. right. Um, another one's rest for sure one, and this can be um, interchanged like your rhinitis there that has your syphilis in it too, so you can get just the rhinitis or mm -hmm. you can get mixtures. I actually just use Respirature 1. I don't give the right nice. Um, so Respirature 1, Yarbac Plus, Mycoplasma, again, they're like we've seen before, and erysipelas. Um, single 2, two ml dose, two weeks of age or older. I actually think you can give that when they're one week old. Um, and then here's one giving them an iron shot when their babies, not necessarily a vaccine, no, actually not at all a vaccine, but it's essential for them to live. Um, give one to two ml, either somewhere 12, 48 hours after they're born, because they are very anemic when they're little, and right. they gotta get the hemoglobin to get their <coughs> They oxygen. tend to be anemic, you're right on that one. And then deworming, <laughs> here's another thing. Uh, not a vaccine at all, but we kind of yeah. throw it in the same sure. group because you have to do it. Um, used at all ages and all sexes, doesn't matter, you got to do it. Uh, sow should be dewormed every time before they farrow. All other pigs need to be dewormed.